Researchers from the Bioprotection Centre at Lincoln University are running trials with four potential biocontrol agents to fight the tomato potato psyllid pest. There are good indications that an effective combination of these agents will be found for use in commercial tomato glasshouse operations. This pest, which we call TPP, does horrible damage to potatoes and tomatoes and other plants, firstly by feeding and making the leaves curl over, which is bad, but more importantly it injects a horrible disease into the plant, and that's the killer that can kill the plants and reduce yield. This seems to be in glasshouses all around the country. Um, I think it started in the North Island, but potatoes have moved around, tomatoes have moved around, and the pest moves with it. In the old days, biological control in glasshouses dominated, and that was wonderful. You know, the three or four pests all got controlled by wasps or ladybirds. But now, this horrible thing has come in, and it doesn't have anything to eat it yet, so pesticides are being used. And unfortunately, those pesticides mess up the previous biocontrol agents, so we're sort of slipping backwards for like 50 years or something. As I know something about biocontrol, we thought, let's try to break the trap of being locked into pesticides. And then we began to collect and investigate what biocontrol agents might be good. We're not saying the pesticides aren't working, we're saying it's unfortunate if a major industry has to depend on pesticides because biological control no longer works. We have funding from Eggmart and some other sources too to try to get some biocontrol agents that really do work back into the greenhouse. And we're trying some animals that have never been used before in this area, so we're trying some novel ideas. Postdoctoral research funded by Eggmart is being undertaken by Shola Olanian. At the moment, we're looking at four biocontrol options for TPP in glass houses, a predatory mite, a wasp, a ladybird, and a bug. So the first of them is Cleobora melia, the southern ladybird. We're also testing Tamarixa triose, which is a parasitic wasp that was introduced from Mexico. We're also trialing Engitatus nicotiani, which is present in New Zealand and it's got relatives that have been used in experiments against TPP in other parts of the world. And also we're trialling a predatory mite, Amblydromalus limonicus, and it feeds as well on TPP. Cleobora, the southern ladybird, was introduced from Australia in the 70s to New Zealand to control tortoise beetles on eucalypts. Engitatus nicotiani probably was introduced accidentally into New Zealand, but it's present. Uh, at the moment, all of them are present in New Zealand and we don't need any permits to use them in our trials. The predatory mite, Limonicus, is used quite widely in Europe uh, for the control of whitefly uh, trips, as well in glass houses already. It's, it's quite effective, especially on cucumbers and uh, ornamental plants. Uh, but at the moment, there is no effective biocontrol agent that is being used in commercial tomato crops anywhere in the world. Uh, so now we're just waiting for them to lay some eggs yep. and those develop through the nymphs. Additional research by Howard London has been funded through a New Zealand government foreign aid programme. One of the aspects of my master's thesis is understanding the ecology of the tomato and potato psyllid. It was very interesting to see that when the insect move from some um, weeds or some plants in the wild to tomato in specific, the rate of development for those, for its progenies, increased significantly compared to if it was on those wild host plants. And that is a, a good indicator for us in planning any control strategy for the insect when it moves to tomato specifically, because it doesn't happen the same way when it moves to potato. These host plants that we're referring to are not evenly dispersed across New Zealand. Some are in Auckland, some might be in some parts of Canterbury only. So understanding how the insect operates on these specific host plants in these specific zones would give you a better idea on how fast the insect can adapt to the crop in these specific areas where these host plants are found. So at the moment, we are testing each of these insects separately, but we're also thinking of combining some of them. 
So for example, we're thinking of combining Tamarixia, the wasp, with Limonicus, the predatory mite, because they tend to attack different stages. So the mite will eat the eggs and the first instars, whereas the wasp prefers to sting the fourth and the early fifth stage nymphs. It's not uncommon to try and use combinations of biocontrol agents. In fact, in some cases, combinations do work better than when you use single uh, organisms. So we're quite optimistic that perhaps a combination of two or more of these agents might actually give us good results. In biocontrol, we're not only interested in the fact that an agent is able to eat or destroy the pest in some way. We're interested also in seeing that it's able to survive within the environment where we're using it, even when that pest has disappeared. So we actually need to be thinking about alternative food sources for the biocontrol agents that we're using. Buckwheat flour is the floral resource for Cleobora and Tamarixia, but um, for the other agents as well, we know that um, moth eggs are very good for feeding um, the mite, the predatory mite, but as well, pollen, windblown pollen, is, is quite good for sustaining the predatory mite populations in the absence of TPP. Cleobora, for example, will do well on some aphids that are not pests of tomato. Therefore, if we have banker plants in the glass house that will support these aphid populations, then Cleobora could sustain itself on that. Engitatus nicotiani can survive on tomatoes in the absence of TPP. So because it's a zoo phytophagous insect, it feeds on both plants and insects. So it would do quite well on tomatoes. And we've observed here in our own trials that it would actually reproduce on tomato plants and tobacco plants as well. We did some trials last year in November and December uh, with these agents, and we got some results. Um, they're preliminary and they're not yet conclusive, but we found that Limonicus, the predatory mite, was actually quite effective at reducing nymph numbers. We also found that Tamarixia did really well in the bog domes. Uh, it reproduced really quickly and it parasitized quite a lot of the, of the nymphs. So we're quite optimistic that um, these results suggest that we're making some progress and that perhaps in the not so distant future we can, we can find a solution to this problem. <coughs> This program was made with funding from New Zealand On Air.